Now they're underdogs yeah. just by one point. Brewer, are you surprised by this? I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm gobsmacked. I can't start every I'm show utterly like this. astounded. I do it all the time. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm shocked. Let, let's, let's count the ways the Lakers should be the favorites. Yeah. Okay. They have the two best players on the floor. Yeah. Without yeah. question. LeBron mm-hmm. and AD. They beat New Orleans three out of four times they played this year by an average yeah. of 25 Easy. points. Yeah. Plus. They have way more playoff experience. It's not even close. LeBron himself has played 282 playoff games. The Pelicans in total, combined, all of them, 205 playoff games. The Lakers are hot, finishing 11-3. and three. The Pelicans are not, finishing 4-5. and five. And New Orleans is bad in the blender. You know what the blender is? I, I don't know. What Smoothie it is. King Center. The <laughs> blender. You never heard that? No, I, I know it. Just act like I made it up. Okay. The blender. They're bad. They are the worst playoff te- or the worst team of all the top eight seeds in either conference. Hmm. 21 and 19. That's not good. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess they're saying AD, questionable, LeBron, probably. No, well, maybe, or no. let me say one other thing they're saying. They're saying that the Lakers might agree with some of my favorite media members and some of my least favorite media members, to be fair. I won't say who's who. Well, I'll say Colin and J-Mac are on the favorite list. That, uh, yeah, the Lakers throw the game. Oh, my God. The Lakers don't want to win this game. But you know who I know doesn't think the Lakers should avoid Denver? LeBron James. Right. You know who I know? I shouldn't say, say I know this part, but I have real reason to believe agrees with me that Playing them now is better than playing them in a month. LeBron James. And you know who is, to add to Bruce's point, they're even hotter than the overall record suggests because they're 9-1 and one in their last 10 where LeBron and oh, AD no. both play. Right. You throw out the game that AD played but went out immediately when he got hit in the face. They, LeBron is playing some of the best basketball of his season yeah. as of late. And while Wild, Wild said something yesterday, I was like, is that right? When you said he's shooting 30% for the month from three. Mm. But then I realized that we're in the very beginnings of April. If we extend that month to and the last game of March, that 30% jumps up to 47%. No. So the, oh, really? well, yeah, that's the, the game, the nine of yeah. 10 <laughs> game. Exactly. <laughs> no, but on the season, cooking the books the like season, he always he's does. 41%. I don't think he's all, but of a I sudden, think the smart thing it, is he hadn't been shooting a ton of correct. Things. And he's not in the he's midst decreased. of some slump. It's quite, it's quite different. And he owns this team. Yeah. There are certain teams that just no matter how old LeBron gets, if he's healthy, He can put his head down and get to the rim. And the Pelicans are one of those teams. This year against New Orleans, he's a 55-60-90 guy and does everything he wants, scoring and distributing. And then there's one other piece to it, which I think lends itself somewhat to our next conversation, but I think is more relevant to this one right here, which is LeBron has, in my opinion, always taken note of things that matter to the NBA whether it's the end season tournament, right? Whether it is the, you know, his his importance there and also except for the All-Star game. The okay, well no, well the All-Star <laughs> game I the, I'm just, I'm just I, And I think once upon a time when oh, everyone took it seriously, day, yeah, he, he took it quite seriously. Yeah, but yeah. the point being, he also has taken note on anyone the NBA tries to position as his rival or heir apparent. Yeah. And you saw in the 2016 finals when he had the moment with Steph and did the shoulder shrug, like, get out of here, because he was being positioned as a rival. Yeah. Zion yeah, was, pos- yeah, that is fair, but I'm saying it, I think he t- takes it personal, mm-hmm. whether it's fair or not. Zion was positioned as not necessarily the next LeBron, but something along those lines. Okay. So, and I'm going to be doing a separate video after I record this. So when you see this video posted, you'll, the same time is it going to be, um, who's under more pressure, Zion or, um, LeBron. So I'm going to shelve that aspect for the other conversation. Um, but in terms of, am I shocked that the Lakers are underdogs? No. Okay. I am not shocked because the Lakers are not that good of a team this season, okay? Now, an AD has also been very wishy-washy. This past, you know, 
X amount of games. I can't give you an exact number, but whether it's his eye, whether it's his back, whether it's, you know, whatever, you know, flu-like symptoms, same thing LeBron had flu-like symptoms. Um, but I think it potentially AD had a concussion. I'm, you know, I'm unsure. Um, it wasn't like necessarily released that he did, but it, you know, it may be that. Um, and so, you know, can LeBron and AD step up? Of course, right? Is it in the realm of possibility that they wallop the Pelicans? Absolutely. But I think that the Pelicans, especially with the healthy Zion, because that what he just showed there before 7-1 against Zion, what when Zion was first in the league and when Zion is dealing with these injuries and trying to come back into the league and get himself back in shape, Zion has had a very rough beginning to his career, right? There's no doubting that. Whether it's self-inflicted or just injury, it doesn't even matter. It's just he, he, ha- he hasn't, you know, had the best start. Um, but we know Zion is great. When Zion is healthy and in shape and ready to go, the dude is a beast. Beast. Um, and so my question is, and my gut tells me, is that Zion is ready for this moment. Zion wants this moment. You know, because this would be his final I am here moment, you know, beating the Lakers, um, you know, at home in front of the crowd, showing that he's worth that money, showing that he was worth that hype, that he was worth the number one overall pick, that he's worthy of the title of being a beast and beating LeBron, you know, taking that crown off his head and saying, bro, this is not 2012 anymore. Goodbye. Get out of here. Like that, that, that's where, you know, what Zion has the potential to do. Um, and I just think that the Pelicans are aware of this moment and they are scrappy. They can be fast. They can be physical. They can do a little bit of everything. I understand that LeBron has had his quote unquote way with them, but I just think that under these circumstances, it's going to be different. And maybe I'm trying to speak this into existence. Because I would really love to see the Lakers versus the Golden State Warriors play in a, you know, uh, a winner take, you know, winner goes, a loser goes home, you know, winner advances. Um, you know, that would be really exciting. And I could not wait for that. So, you know, I, I may be trying to speak that in existence. Um, I also like the Pelicans. I like um, Brandon Ingram and a couple of the other pieces. And so I do believe that they have genuinely what it takes. You know, they're younger. They're stronger. Um, I think if this was a seven-game series, I would without a doubt pick the Pelicans. But since it's the you know, w- you know, one game, that is where it becomes absolutely brutal to predict. Which is why everyone goes nuts over March Madness and goes nuts over you know bracket busters or whatever the heck you know they call them and stuff like that because one game is brutal. One game, anything can happen. Anything can happen. That's why consistently professional gamblers do not do well in March Madness because it's brutal, 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 brutal. Um, so it's just hard to predict. We have no idea. Everyone's talking about how great LeBron's shooting. Right. He could go, he could have a crazy game where he goes five for five from the three, from three. And he could have a game where he goes one for eight. You just have zero idea. And this is one of, you know, the common themes whenever I'm talking about basketball and talking about predictions. It's why I don't like making predictions. It's why I, you know, when I first started this channel, I always kept saying, and this was more football related at the time, um, because basketball wasn't, oh, I guess basketball was played, but it didn't matter. Um, It was that I I enjoy post-game analysis rather than pre-game analysis, because I will always say this, that the world's greatest gamblers in the world okay the best of the best of the best their win percentage is like 52 53 percent okay and that is the brilliant people the people that know everything that even have some inside information their success rate is only 53 percent and they don't even sustain the 53 percent the whole time uh so at best it's a coin flip so this whole idea that any of us could reliably predict anything is comical to me um you know it is that's why it's just i I try to stay away from it but of course if you're making content like this and and watching content like this it's it's impossible um so i always try to balance the whole fandom as well as predictions right i try to bring a hybrid of like this is what i think is going to happen but also this is what i hope is going to happen and these are why i hope this is going to happen because i think it'll be more entertaining because of this that this that so with this though i'm really excited for this game because it is young versus old 
Um, we're finally get to, going to get to see Zion in action because we've been robbed of years. We've been robbed of Zion being amazing. Zion has pretty much just been forgotten, you know, which is unfortunate. And I'm just, I'm hopeful that, that Zion just had some of these growing pains in the beginning of his career, but he'll be able to find, you know, some longevity and, and some health and be able to actually put together his own little run and be exciting because he is an absolute beast. And I'm excited to see what he and the Pelicans can do in this situation. Um, and as well as Brandon Ingram, now that they're actually, you know, putting a team around him and putting him in a position to also succeed. Um, so, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for this game. I really, really am, but, uh, I'm not shocked that the Lakers are underdogs by no stretch of the imagination. LeBron James is old. He is, you know, going to be a 40 year old man. AD is always backed up at this point. I would love to know what the odds are of if AD can make it through this whole, this full game. Seriously, I would love to it because it's obviously not 100%, and I don't think it's probably 80% or 90%. It's probably closer to like, set, there's a 70% chance that AD actually finishes the game start to finish. That's a real thing with AD. So you just don't know. And if AD's not there, then I just think that the Pelicans could eat. Um, I understand that they got beat, you know, recently. I, I just, you know, that doesn't mean anything to me, quite honestly. Um, if, if anything, and this is definitely a false understanding of how things work. Um, at casinos, right? Uh, if you ever go to like a roulette table, they have the numbers and the colors, okay, going up and on the on like a on like a little like digital kind of uh, I don't even know what it would be called, but like a digital sign, so to speak, and it gives you the illusion, right? If you see black you know, black 14, black 12, black, you know, whatever. And it goes, goes, goes. And you see that the last five spins were all black. Your mind tells you what well, that means is do for a red, you know, that sounds good in theory, but the truth is, is that there's, there's no greater, there's no difference in, in it and the likelihood that it'll be black or red. It's an absolute illusion in the short term, short term window. It gives you that sense because if you go 10 and there's a 50-50 chance, then okay, well, it has to kind of balance it out. But we're talking about on a scale of infinity, of endlessness. So it's just 50-50, it will always be 50-50, whether you're flipping the, you know, flipping a coin once or flipping a coin a billion times to an infinity times. So there's this idea that when you're watching these games, you say, oh, well, they just got beat. That means they're due for a win or this or that. It, it's slightly different when you're talking about sports because it's not a 50-50 chance, right? So it is what is more likely to happen. Now, we go both ways in this. We always say, oh, well, they just got beat by a lot or they've been losing. That means they're due for a win or vice versa. We say, oh, wow, they just got them beat. That means they got, you know, their number. They know exactly what to do. Look, LeBron is 7-1 and one against Zion. That means, of course, he's going to be able to keep winning. Sports is way more complicated than that. And it's just, if it, again, if it was that simple, if it was truly that simple, then the, the success rate would not be 52, 53% a win rate for uh, professional gamblers, okay? It would be way higher. If you could say, oh, well, LeBron wins seven out, you know, seven out of eight games and, you know, um, the Pelicans are four and five in the, their last nine games and the, the Lakers have been doing good and LeBron's been, you know, shooting well. Okay, great. Easy bet, easy money. It's never that easy. It's never that easy. So that's why it's a one point game. Um, so when you see that, a minus one, that's how you know they don't even know. And it's just a true coin flip. And it's going to come down to, like I said, is LeBron going to go one for eight or is he going to go six for six? Is, you know, is Austin Reeves going to knock down that three where you're just like, oh my God, how the heck did that go in? Or does he airball that shot where you go, I can't believe he just took that shot, man. I told you he's not as good as, as everyone says he is. Like, it all depends. It really all depends. You know, I mean, it's just that that's to me what makes basketball a lot more unpredictable. But that's why there, it's also a seven game series, because it allows for those things to happen. Uh, because on a long enough timeline, on a long, on, on a, you know, enough games, the better team should win. And that is, again, why March Madness is so exciting because the best team doesn't always win because anything can happen. Um, so, yeah, I'm pumped for this game. I really can't wait. Um, but those are just my thoughts. Um, I would absolutely love to hear yours. Are you shocked 
that the Lakers are underdogs? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here. And I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to. Something that we're really excited to be part of. And I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really, really does help with the visibility. And it really helps combat all the haters and the trolls. And I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And see you next time.